Hello learners, NIOS welcomes you to painting subject video series. This is lesson 10, Sculpture of Indus Valley Civilization part 2. Now let us learn about the priest bust in the sculptures found in the Indus Valley. We will also understand how the bust was made. This bust, the title is Priest Bust. The medium is Statite. The size is 14.25 centimeter into 11 centimeter. The location or the place where this bust was found is Mohenjo-daro and this bust is now displayed at the Karachi National Museum in Pakistan. Or how did the Indus Valley Civilization artists make this bust? So we have various kind of stones and rocks. This specific kind of stone called statite is easy to manipulate in terms of uh, getting a desired shape with use of various kind of tools. These tools are used to chisel and break apart the part, the bigger chunk of the stone until we get the proper shape and size of what we intend to make and then we get into the finer details. And this specific kind of stone is called statite. That's how or this is how this is what was used to make the priest bust. The priest bust is the most famous artifact of the Indus Valley civilization. There were a lot of artifacts which were found. There were various kind of tools, there were various kind of jars, the pottery which was found. But the priest bust due to the high level of skill and the beauty, this became one of the most famous artifacts of IVC. The perspective about the lifestyle and the culture of IVC can be imagined from looking at the priest bust, the kind of the dressing sense, the fashion sense. And to think that the Indus Valley civilization was one of the early civilizations, but people still had a sense of style. The priest bust is beautifully designed. You will see a jeweled band on the forehead as well as the arm. Both of them have jewels in it. The priest is also wearing a shawl on his left shoulder. And very proportionate and the fact that the, it looks high status. The trimmed beard, perfectly neat, the combed hair in the center, that too very precisely done indicates a sense of fashion among the people of Indus Valley civilization. The trefoil motif which you see on the shawl of the priest bust goes on to show that the Indus Valley civilization people were already designing their clothes in that era. They had already started making various kind of designs using various kind of motifs like the trefoil motif in the IVC. That is remarkable. And the details in this sculpture shows the kind of skills, very high level of skills of the artists who have done such a great job and made such a beautiful piece 
of artwork. Now we understand about the description of the priest bust. It is made of the statite stone. The priest has his hair parted in the center. The beard is neat and trimmed. The eyebrows are straight. The eyes are narrow and the neck is thick. The shawl which the priest is wearing is adorned with the trefoil motifs. Also, this trefoil motif is seen in artifacts of other civilizations like the Egyptian civilization, then the Babylonian civilization and the Mesopotamian civilizations. In the current countries of Kuwait and Iraq, these early civilizations and the artifacts which were found also had the tree foil motif. So that means the people were already designing their clothes like the IVC people, Indus Valley Civilization people. Now the description for the second sculpture and let us discuss that. The title is The Dancing Girl. The medium is bronze. To give you an example of what bronze is, you would see that the medals given in competitions, first is gold, second is silver, third is bronze. So that is the material used for this sculpture. The period is 2500 BC. This sculpture was found at Mohenjo-daro. The size is 10.2 centimeters into 5 centimeters into 2.5 centimeters. And this sculpture is now displayed at the National Museum in New Delhi. The dancing girl is made through a process which is known as the lost wax process of metal casting. Let us understand what this process is. So first, the model of the dancing girl was made by using wax. So the entire body was molded. Then they would use various different kinds of material. So for example, plaster, they would use plaster on all sides. What they also did was to ensure that the dancing girl figure made of wax didn't fall, they would give it some kind of a support. And this entire mold, this entire structure, they would use some kind of plaster wet plaster on all sides, on top of this to ensure that it is enveloped. Then they would use other kind of materials to cover this entire structure, this, this mold. Then they would put it in the fire so that the wax inside is melted and now there is a hollow inside this entire thing and hot metal is poured inside the hole where the wax came out. They, they would pour hot metal inside because the wax has now melted but the mold inside is remaining. So they would ensure that the entire mold is full with hot metal. Then they would wait for some time and then start breaking the entire structure carefully so that all the materials, extra materials 
are removed until you get to the sculpture which is in the innermost part. Then they would brush it, chisel it and that is how the metal sculptures were casted. And this is the lost wax process of metal casting. Hot metal is actually used in this process but the mold is made of wax. Now the general introduction for the Indus dancing girl. During the Indus Valley civilization metal craft was highly developed. There were experts highly skilled who knew how to draft metal sculptures. The dancing girl sculpture has certain features which indicates that the woman could be of tribal origin. So the first is that it has thick lips, second is that it has, she has flat nose and the hair is curly in shape of a bun and looks like the woman could be from a tribal origin. I mean that is what the opinion is. The posture of the dancing girl suggests that she has perhaps taken a break during a dancing session and she is standing there thinking about her next performance. That is what the posture indicates. general description of the dancing girl sculpture. The dancing girl is a nude sculpture. Her right hand is on her hip. The left knee is thrust forward. and the head is slightly tilted backwards. Her curly hair is arranged in a bun at the nape and is also adorned with jewellery. The dancing girl is also wearing bangles on her arms. and other parts of her body adorned with jewellery as well and the sculpture is made by lost wax process of metal casting. Now let us discuss about the third sculpture. The third sculpture is called the mother goddess. The medium is terracotta. The period is 2500 BC, place of origin is Mohenjo-daro, size of this sculpture is 8.5 centimeters into 3.4 centimeters and this sculpture is now displayed at the National Museum in Delhi. The terracotta process uses very high quality of clay and the design and the molding is done on a potter's wheel. Once the molding is done, the clay figure is used for drying. Once the drying is done, they would ensure that the paint of the designs is done and then it is baked in the fire that ensures that the entire sculpture is hardened and becomes sturdy and then it is taken out 
and then the polishing is done as final touches and the mother goddess has also been made in the similar process. The general introduction of this sculpture called mother goddess. This sculpture has been found at several sites not only the Indus valley but also in the Mesopotamian civilization. The worship of mother goddess or the earth goddess was widespread during that time. This cult of goddess worship continues even today. The origin of the veneration of Mother Earth perhaps came from the cultivators, people who used to cultivate their land after the sowing of the seeds was done, they would pray to the Mother God, to Mother Earth for help and support and her blessings to ensure there was a good yield. And this belief originated into a kind of veneration which was widespread during that time. And these kind of models were used for religious rituals of the Indus Valley civilization. For example, whenever there would be some prayers, they would make these models and offer them to the goddess. We also have this now when we have any kind of puja, we make lot of offerings to the god. Similarly, during the religious rituals in Indus Valley, they used this kind of sculptures. The general description of this sculpture, the mother goddess figurine is made of terracotta. We just understood the process of making terracotta pottery. So first the clay mold is done and then it is baked in fire to achieve the hard and sturdy structure. The eyes, breasts and jewellery were later stuck on the figure using pellets and rolls of clay. So first they would make the model and then these additional parts like the eyes, the breasts, the jewellery, the headgear which we saw were later stuck on the figure using pellets and rolls of clay. After the clay figure dried, it was baked in the oven or the kiln to ensure that it became hard and sturdy and ready. And these figurines and sculptures were used as votive figures in religious rituals as offerings to the gods and goddesses during the Indus Valley civilization, similar to the offerings which we make to gods during our religious ceremonies. I hope you enjoyed watching part 2 of the lesson and will watch all the following videos of this lesson. If you have any queries, please email us at signlanguage at the rate nios.ac.in. For more information, you may visit our website www.nios.ac.in. Thank you.